Hello everyone, I, Sandeep Kaur, on behalf of ADM Instruments, would like to welcome our honorable guest speaker, Dr. Michelle Yeb, and all the distinguished attendees present here in this webinar. I hope all of you are keeping well in this new normal at present, when every aspect of local and global education is suffering from the crisis of COVID-19, during this pandemic, AD Instruments with its vision of making science easier for our educators and researchers is persistently organizing events that can help them stay connected and stay updated with the latest techniques. With the same aim, we are organizing the today's webinar. The title of today's webinar is LT, the future of education, active learning during and beyond COVID-19. This webinar will be led by Dr. Michelle Yeb from Monash University, Malaysia. Dr. Michelle has earned her Bachelor's of Science in 2009, followed by her PhD in Molecular Medicine in 2014 from one of the renowned universities of Malaysia, that is University of Malaya. Her research expertise focuses on toxic pharmacology and toxicology. She has vast experience in pharmacopronic, pronomics, immunology, and molecular modeling of bioactive toxics. Her ultimate goal is to develop an enriched tool towards next generation biotherapies. Beside, beside her active interest in research, she is also an educator who adopts various active learning strategies and technology. She has taught in pharmacology with emphasis on student-centered learning using different approaches. Dr. Michelle enjoys promoting STEM education in public, to the public. She has organized and hosted several workshops and forums to advance the discipline of medical sciences through research and education. She is currently working as a coordinator in Monash University, Malaysia. So I welcome Dr. Michelle and would like to hand over this video to ma'am. Over to you, Michelle. Um, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, thanks to ADI Instrument. Uh, I hope you can hear me clear, or maybe just let me share my presentation. Okay, I think during the presentation, I will off my video just to ensure a smooth uh, running of my talk. Um, first of all, thanks to ADI for inviting me giving this talk on the future of education, looking at active learning during and beyond the COVID-19. So in the past, we were the product of a traditional teaching and learning environment, whereby the teachers are the key person in our knowledge searching process. So basically what teachers give us, we just assimilate and we just absorb. Back in those times, there was nearly no live interaction with our teachers, whereby we went to the class, finished the lessons and left the class. Then at the end, we just sit for the exams. So let me ask you this, when it comes to the 21st century, okay, the mode of how education is carried out has changed tremendously. We are no longer the only knowledgeable person giving the knowledge to our students. So if let's say even ourselves, if we have a problem or we have a question, what we will normally do is first we look for Google. And more importantly is our students, they can do the same as well. So we are no longer having gaps with our students. Instead, we need to connect ourselves to the students. Well, students nowadays have a lot of exposure to technology, gadget. They can easily search for the answers they want, okay? Especially through Google. So what is our role here as a teacher? We can't just be the knowledge feeders anymore. Instead, we are the facilitators in their learning and knowledge diving process. So of course, with all the social medias available, our students are also connected at the back together with their friends, where they can also get answers from their friends. They can connect with each other using various communication tools as well. Here comes the student-centered learning, where students become the active learner of all the active learning pedagogy. Nevertheless, 
the transition from the old school teaching to a 21st century learning has never been easy. This is because the, our students are first caught in shock. This is definitely because they would resist and rebel. They may ask, hey, why am I decide what I'm learning? Isn't that my teacher the one who told me what I'm supposed to do? Then slowly they will start to accept. Of course, in the process, they may struggle, but they gain confidence. Okay, they may think that I'm a bit lost, but I still I think I can do it. And finally, they achieve the success where the knowledge is being printed in their mind. They do it and they remember it. So what are the key things in a student-centered active learning is we as the teachers cannot just let the students hands on in the knowledge diving without a pre-exposure knowledge or we say a pre-knowledge here. So I often emphasize the importance of having a pre-knowledge during a pre-class for students to expose to the pre-knowledge that you want them to know of a selected topic. And this pre-class activity on the pre-knowledge has to be concise, not overloading the students, and prepare the students well with the expectations for the in-class later on. So we can always make use of technology, make it as engaging as possible, so that it triggers your student eagerness to join your class later. So when I say it's a non-classroom based, meaning that this may be done off your normal class time, but you are still able to engage with your students. And I must emphasize here that this pre-class component, the learning activities must be authentic enough and it has to be experiential that you try to connect to a real life and always make sure that your pre-class activities are connected and reflecting the learning objective of your topic. So normally this pre-class is asynchronous whereby there will be no real-time interaction with the students. So the in-class activity is very important then. So now when you go into the class, you can ignite the fire to learn. This is of course a classroom base. So try to flip the classroom from traditional to active learning. Because as a teacher, you are no longer the only person talking in the class. So get your students to talk, okay? But before they talk, make sure the pre-knowledge that you give them is good enough, is sufficient enough to ignite Okay, their eagerness to learn in your class. So one very important thing that I would like to share with you during the in-class is consider the diversity of your students. So we have to be inclusive enough to consider the diversity of our students. For example, some students are very vocal in the class. Okay, they can talk a lot, they can share a lot of ideas, but some are not. So this is the time you got the progress of your students. Ensure that they are on the right progress and on the right track. Well, again, remember that you are a facilitator. What you can do is you can do some anonymous polling or voting using technology and create an engaging learning environment with the students. So such engaging learning environment is inclusive. Okay, so it will make your students feel that they belong to the class, make them feel that they can contribute to the knowledge generation as well. And you can also perform some collaborative activities, some collaborative works, okay? Get the students to work in a group together to solve a set of problems. So this is a problem-based, or we say an inquiry-based learning. So as a facilitator, as a teacher, what you do is encourage them, okay? Encourage their critical thinking in the knowledge diving process. After all, your learning activities must be authentic and experiential. So this in-class activity, which is synchronous, is very important as an enrichment towards the success delivery of the topic in your subject. 
So after the class, or we say a post class, okay, so how do you ensure that the learning outcomes okay, of a particular topics are achieved? So do some assessment. Okay, do some assessment to check whether your students achieve the learning outcomes or not. So the assessment can be formative or we say continuous assessment. So it can be, for example, you give your students some project-based work okay, that is aligned to the learning objective of the topic or the subject. Do some weekly quiz. Okay? Or you can ask them to prepare some reports, writing, okay, some kind of assignments that are authentic enough. And these are all the examples of formative assessment. Of course, the assessment can be submittive as well, okay? So everything is summed up and examine the whole learning outcomes of the subject, which is usually a final exam at the end of the semester. So in this active learning, okay, we have to continuously catch our students' progress. So one of the way for you to check out whether your students are on the right progress or not is by doing a formative assessment. So ongoing during the semester, check out them whether they actually follow well the subjects that you're teaching. So check their knowledge, check their understandings towards the subject okay, by having different kinds of formative assessment. So this formative assessment and summative assessment will then contribute to the assessing the learning outcomes of the subjects that you are teaching. So now I would like to do some very um, small activity with you. So what you can do is, okay, if you look at this, can you go to this website, pollev.com slash med by B-I-O-S-C. Okay, so I would like to ask your feedback as well. Okay, so as a teacher, what is your main challenge in the teaching during the COVID? pandemic. Okay, you can go to pollev.com slash medbiosc and type in your response. So we hope to see um, some of your feedbacks to tell us what is the main challenge. Okay, I will be sharing this in the chat box. Okay, so I received the first response. Um, I believe it's run online class. Okay, I'll be sharing the link again. It's poev.com slash medbiosc. Poev. Okay, I'm sharing the link again. Right, okay, paulev.com slash medbiosc. Engagement, student, practical,
Okay, we can see some of the challenges that everyone is facing during the pandemic. Okay, of course, to run a physical class, okay, everything is online. Um, the practical engagement, student. Okay, internet, right, that will be the biggest challenge, I believe. Participation, connectivity, yes. Technology. Yes, it's very difficult and challenging, especially teaching fully online. Okay, especially teaching fully online and try to get an interactive as well as engaging session is really, really tough. Okay, thank you for, to those who have responded. So now I will go into what is the main um, things that we are discussing in our webinar today. Okay. Uh, let me just... Okay. Okay, thanks to those who have responded. I think most of you have addressed the main challenge here. And I would say the main challenge is running everything online. Okay. So the facilities, okay, the internet connectivity will be one of the issues. Secondly, how do we want to ensure an engaging, okay, sessions with the students when everything is online, okay? The participation from our students, that would be one of the things that we have to ensure this is consistent during the online teaching. So due to the lockdown in um, COVID-19, it has changed how the learning works. So one of the key things that we must continuously ensure to work is, your online classes has to be remain as active as possible. But I think this is the quite challenging um, things to cover. Since the teaching and the learning activities have sh shifted entirely online, it is actually a big challenge in the first place for both the students and teachers. So of course, some of the asynchronous learning activities, we can still continue to run on LMS such as if you have Moodle in your institutes. So those will be the main platform where you share resources to your students. But the thing is the engaging part. How do we address the engaging part of teaching online? So to teach online, okay, the in-class activity has been different, especially in the online teaching because you are no longer having a physical contact with the student. So we have tried to use different communication platform such as Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, or even some may use some video recordings or webinar to run the in-class show. So despite some of these interactions are live, you are no, no longer physically in contact with the students. So I would say the engaging part is um, the, the main challenge that we need to further escalate because you need to continuously ensure that the students are on the right progress because learning online has never been easy as this is the first time that students have to learn everything online. So we say that um, the learning experience now for the students is rather personalized because students get to learn at their own pace. So when students get to learn at their own pace, okay, everything that we need to do now is to ensure they are on the right track, okay? So this is the main challenge in online learning and remote learning. So what I would think the next, next big challenge would be the hands-on experiment. I see this as the biggest challenge in addressing experiential learning approach in STEM related courses. Okay, so I personally teach into a year three subject on pharmacology. And the subject itself has shifted from a didactic traditional lecture to active learning in two years back. But even though um, that is active learning component inside, of course, we still have an intensive wet experiment. 
Okay, so we have five weeks of intensive wet experiments which required the students to have enhanced skills, okay, in testing the drug actions on different organ systems. So what we did when we had the face-to-face -face experiment is we used to set up organ buff, okay, or using animal models for students to study the drug effects. And prior to the face-to-face -face experiments, which are the in-class activities, we have the pre-lab questions, or we have some sorts of pre-exposure questions to pre-expose students to the knowledge of the particular experiments. But now with this lockdown and everything is online, how do we convert our hands-on experiment to online? And the question here is, how do we maintain the authenticity and experiential learning components when it comes into STEM-related hands-on experiment? So we must maintain the hands-on component despite it is being virtual. And we try to make a simulated experiment that is achieving the learning objective okay, of the topic itself. So here comes where I start to, um, I was searching around and looking for simulated experiment. And I came across this LT and they actually have this trial license to all the educators to try out their LT platform to run the simulated experiment. So I can show you how is this done. Um, just a moment. Okay, I can share to you how exactly commonly LT is done. Okay, so what uh, I did earlier this year is I actually signed up for an LT license to run the simulated experiment. Okay, so I just signed up for it. And after that, I have access to it. And I give, I give access to my students as well to go into LT to start the simulated experiment. So this is how LT experiments do, okay? Here's a quick video of the overall structure of our LT labs and how you can use them as virtual labs using our example data features. So this is the introduction page, which is a quick overview of the lab, as well as listing the learning objectives of the lab. And then we have a challenge page, which is basically a question or a couple questions that lead into the activities. And they may address some misconceptions or just test some of the prerequisite knowledge that students should have before starting the lab. After this, we have our equipment setup pages. These include videos and illustrations, as well as some procedural steps to get students set up for the lab. In your virtual lab, you can either choose to keep these in so students can kind of visualize the whole lab experience, or if you don't find them necessary, they're very quick to delete. After the equipment setup, we jump right into our lab activities. Each of our activity pages start off with a guiding question at the top that basically highlights the purpose of the activity. What is the data going to show us? Why are we doing this? Here's our list of procedural steps. And if students were to follow those in the lab and record data, it would look much like the example data that's in these panels. Again, if you don't find it useful for students to see the procedures that went into recording the data, these pages can be deleted and students can jump right to the analysis page, which is next. So on the analysis page, this is where students actually interact with the data and take measurements. Here you can see that we have a lot of blue text that's underlined. These are called pop-ups, and this is where some information is stored to help students navigate the lab. There are videos about how to use the different analysis tools. So students can click on these and kind of figure out how to use the panels for themselves. There are also a lot of steps here pop-ups that show you exactly what the analysis tool should look like when you're going through the procedures. So here I can expand the time axis and then I can use this region selector tool to take my measurement and I can enter my data into this table. So 
students can just follow along with each of the measurements and then use their data to answer a lot of check your understanding questions. When students attempt their answer here, they go to click this check answer button and they're asked to commit their answer before they're checking what the correct answer is. This makes sure that students can actually, they actually give a real attempt before just getting the answer. Then they have a lot of rich feedback that helps them get a fuller understanding of the concepts of the lab. So this is the basic overview of our LT labs. Um, you'll find a lot of information on our support site about how you can edit them to your liking, but we hope that your students enjoy interacting with the data and can still get a virtual lab experience using LT. Okay, so basically that is um, how LT works, but I would like to share my contacts, my experience in using the LT. So when, after I signed up for the free LT license, what I did was, um, this LT is an online platform that contains a lot of ready to use content. But at the same time, you can fully customize those content to align with the learning objective of the subjects. So what I did was, of course, I have to customize the learning module according to the learning objective of my subject. So I have um, put here three different examples of the experiments that I have run using the LT. Okay, so first thing what I did was of course the pre-exposure knowledge. So in the pre-exposure knowledge, okay, you can actually design some challenging questions, okay, but prepare your students to a pre-knowledge to experiment. So give them the marks, reward them with the marks if they answer those questions. So students can work on the questions that are related to the experiment. So this gives them a pre-exposure to what they should know about the experiment itself. Then after that, what I did was, of course, I have to outline the learning objective of the experiment. So use the action verb. Okay, in your objective, use the action verbs to outline the learning objective to emphasize the importance of the lessons. So I would suggest to use the action verbs according to Bloom's taxonomy. So what is Bloom taxonomy? Basically, Bloom taxonomy can be divided into six levels. So whereby the first two levels are the basic levels, or we say a low order thinking. So some things that is related to remember, understand, okay, those are lower order thinking skills. But when we move up from apply, analyze, evaluate, or create, or something we call synthesize, these are all the higher order thinking skills. Okay, so try to use those action verbs from higher order thinking skills because you want your students to develop psychomotor skills from the experiment itself. So this higher order thinking skills will help your students to get what are the important things that you want to deliver to them during the experiment. So I would say try to design your experiment that is aligned to higher order thinking skills as this will also make your experimental design as challenging as interest as learnable as possible. Okay, so of course, um, I did put in some videos to this LT. Okay, but before you put in the video, check the Creative Commons license. Okay, check the copyright. If required, you may want to write or get a permissions from the video owner before you can adopt for your module design. Okay, so I would say um, in the LT, I managed to design an experiential learning, though it is not physical, okay? Because in the LT, this is the part that I like the most, okay? The simulate recording data. The data collection is similar to what the students did in the lab, which is using the lab charts, okay? In this simulating uh, data recording, what happened is it allows a systematic way of the data collection. 
So this part in the LT allows the students to simulate the recording data, okay, by using the example data. So the students can actually move around, okay, with the instructions given here, and they can record the data directly from this simulation. So this is exactly what they did in the physical lab. So in the physical lab also, they make use of the lab charts. Okay, they use the lab charts and record the data. So the students will be able to see how they set up and record the data okay, by watching interactive videos as well. And they can then simulate the recording of the data and they can put in their data here in the table. So this table, you can also design and put it into the LT. Okay, so after that, a graph will be shown. So the students can immediately see the trend of a drug action and they can analyze the data. Okay. So once the students complete the data collection and analysis, so put in some questions for them to complete. So you can put in some questions that to check the students' understanding. I would say this is a post-class activity. Okay. So for example, you can ask them, the predictions, the hypothetical data, or the hypothetical results that they predict. And after that, they will have to do some data analysis, whereby based on the results obtained from the data. So they analyze what would be the response, okay, if let's say this type of tissue is exposed to this type of drugs. Okay, so they can have some um, data analysis and they, this is reflected in the questions and answer in this part. So later on, you can also increase the difficulties of your questions by asking them some challenging questions. Okay, ask them to analyze, ask them to evaluate or examine, okay, the data. So try to match, okay, try to design the questions according to higher level of the order thinking skills. Okay, so after students complete it, okay, they can actually commit, commit the answers, all the data they have recorded in the LT. They can download the PDF, okay, for their own reference. So what I did was I will tell, I will tell the students to download the PDF and then they submit, submit it into Moodle as the lab report. So in a personalized learning environment, because in this um, experiment, of course, the students are no longer confined within a schedule of a practical class, which means they can do it at any time at convenience before the due date. So we say this is a personalized learning environment as well. So it's important you monitor the student progress. Okay, so you need to ensure that your students has enrolled to the LT, they have started the simulator experiment, and if they have committed to the simulator experiment, or they are not even started, okay? So those students, of course, very uh, small proportion, they have not even started the LT. So you need to ask them, is there any problems that they encounter? Okay, so we need to ensure the students are progressing well in the subject, especially when everything is online. Okay, when everything is online learning and teaching. So the advantage of using a digital tool is you can get to use all the analytics okay, to monitor the students. So I would say this is also important in terms of monitoring the student progress. So what I would say in the future education is there will be a new normal in teaching. Okay, as I talk to many colleagues of mine, all of them actually agree that there will be increase in the blended learning. Okay, there will be hybrid learning, even though we are allowed back to the school, okay, back to the campus, what happened is there will still be some online learning with some small group learning activities physically. So if there is increase in blended learning, how do we need to maintain the activeness how do we need to maintain the active learning components 
of the subjects that we are teaching. At the same time, we must also increase the authenticity, try to relate to the real life scenario. At the same time, not to compromise the quality of any blended learning. After all, ensure student centeredness is the most important thing. And there will be, of course, increase in the digital literacy. How can we make use of technology-led educational tools in supporting the blended learning? So we can see and we, we can see there's a need to empower the use of technology in the teaching and learning beyond this pandemic. So last but not least, we should not leave anyone behind. Try to be inclusive, as inclusive as possible, while considering the diversity of our students. So in the future experiments that we could see is the simulation or the immersion learning, such as using VR, AR, or the simulated experiments will be increasing in their usage whereby we can make use of these simulations, okay, the immersion learning, as a pre-exposure knowledge to our students. So when the students come for physical experiments, now we can divide the students into small groups for them to work in the lab while observing the physical distancing in the lab. So make use of those in technology try to align to the learning objective of the subjects and when the students work in a small group on particular experiments they will have an advanced pre-exposure knowledge so that they can learn and achieve the learning outcomes that you want them to know so i think i will end my talk as of now and thank you for your attention Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thanks for sharing your information. Uh, definitely, it will help all of us. So now to proceed further in this webinar, we have with us uh, Vaishnavi. She looks after our Southeast Asia region. She'll be giving you a small demonstration of how LT can be used in our learning. So over to you, Vaishnavi. So I will stop yeah. sharing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon everyone uh, thank you michelle for the informative uh, presentation so uh, before i get into the highlights of uh, lt so uh, we have this uh, 90 day free trial so here you can uh, in this page you can register all your details and start my trial you can click on this and you will uh, get the confirmation or mail on creating an account with the lt and uh, you can proceed further with using LT. So uh, I'll just go with the highlights of uh, uh, this LT. I'll share my screen. Yeah, so after you sign up, uh, you will uh, get into a page like this. So here, uh, since I've created many course, so you can see on your left side, there are many course. Initially, it will be a blank one. So you have to click on this and add your course name. So you can give the relevant name to your course and you will see the name towards your uh, left side. So you can click on the course itself. So coming to content, uh, uh, you can click on this import LT content. So this is just like in library where uh, to work with you can download the lessons here so we have different collection uh, it's not only human physiology we have for anatomy animal biology clinical skills so here are the list of courses we offer and then in case if you want to import a complete collection that is all of these lessons you can directly click on uh, import collection or if you wish to have a uh, have to work on a particular uh, topic you can just say import on this and it will start downloading and you can see the particular uh, lesson on the course so here uh, we have a few of the tabs 
so here uh, lessons you will see the lessons that uh, will be downloaded and under modules you have uh, different lessons combined and here under students work uh, we have uh, students where you can manage the student work so maybe i can show you here so here is the one so you also have a dashboard where you, it can show you like how many students you have invited and how many have accepted and how many of them are actually working on the lessons so as you can see this color coding is there so students who are working inside the lesson there it will show in a blue range and for those who had completed it will show in green and those who have not at all started it will show you in the green so here instead of going uh, to complete to inside the lesson and knowing what a particular student is doing you can uh, you can come up with uh, knowing their progress in the dashboard itself so here are uh, this is the lesson tab and if i go under students so i have imported some three of the students so it will show you even student wise and these are the different lessons they will be working on that progress it will show and coming to students account here is where you can manage the student data so in case if you want to invite uh, you start with the uh, three or four five students you can just directly go to here and say add student you have to enter their details and say add so they will receive a mail with their uh, details like uh, to sign up for the uh, lt and then they can log in and carry out with the um, working in the experiment and in case if you have large group of students around 50 100 then we have is this import feature where uh, where you can mention the details in an excel sheet and then if you say import the, this is how uh, all the students will be added again in case if you want to segregate student based on department or topic wise again you have sections so here i have created a section for one one student so so this uh, here you have a organized way of managing the students and if i come under staff accounts here again uh, it's not only that one staff can work at a time so you can involve your other uh, uh, faculty and they can all work in a single topic if you are having a group activity for assigning the topic to uh, students so you all can invite invitation works the same way how we have for the student enter their details and then here we have some roles here you can assign them as a deputy course administrator or author or grader so any of the roles you can choose and you can assign them so here you can manage the staff and coming to a lesson if i go under here so as uh, dr michelle said we need uh, before going to the lab there should be a pre knowledge so uh, so every lesson has a lab and a pre lab so if i open a pre lab lesson so as you can see here there is a bookmark if i click on this so there will be a background information before they start for the lesson so whatever knowledge they needed before they start the experiment so all the details will be given here so they can read this and then they can they can answer the questions here next so there will be some activities given to them based on the images or drag and drop or table graph so these there will be some of this activities and there will be some of the videos so at the final they will have a report page where they can view and then submit their answers so they can view whatever they have answered here and then finally say comment so they'll have a pdf file to download as uh, you have seen uh, dr michelle has shown in the presentation so this is uh, about the pre lab and lab will have the main task to do so if i open a lab so many of uh, uh, those who have joined you might be already aware of power lab 
so many must be using power lab and lab chart so uh, this lt is not only now limited to uh, you know uh, using it only online through during this times it can be used beyond also that's what we wanted to convey because now here uh, we have some of the experiments where example data are fed so that uh, those who don't have the equipments they can use the uh, example data and uh, carry out the analysis but in case if you have the hardware and once you are back to your labs you can definitely record the live data as you can see there are this recording panels once you connect the lab uh, power lab it will recognize and you can start recording here so there are this uh, instruction based uh, uh, images where for the connection and video also so as you can see here we have fed some of the example data and you can use this and start working on it and in case uh, you have uh, in case you require a recording of live data it also allows you to have a connection to uh, power lab and start recording the live and these are the contents that uh, we are providing like ad has developed adi has developed in case if you want to uh, tailor it based on your academic requirement again we also have this edit feature so if i click on this edit so bottom you can see there are some uh, icons so i have got so if i go under panels so here are the different tools you can use to create your own lessons so in case in case in this page itself i am adding in case you want to have a text you can just drag and drop here so you can and you can go under edit and enter the reliable text you want and then say done and you also have this images i'm dropping it here if i go under edit and say i want to add an image i want this image here so if i say done so that particular image will be loaded and if i want to see how it will look for a student i'll go under preview and see the page so this is how you can manage and we also have multimedia if in case if you want to upload an video just drag and drop so editing is very easy so it's just dragging and dropping the required tools you need to you need in your uh, lesson if i go to edit i want to add a video so i'm adding this video so i'll say done and i'll go under preview to check how is the video quality So as you can see here, uh, it's a like fully HD quality video you can upload. So uh, even in the video requirements, it's not compromised. So you have a very clear video you can upload. And how we have for the video, we also have for the audio file. In case if you have any audio file, hard sounds, you can say. So you just have to drag and drop the tools. So these are some of the basic uh, highlights of LT which you can manage here and here are different pages like um, now now there might be some requirement like you 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 want this lesson but few of the pages you want to delete or you want to add your own pages so here are the some of the things you can duplicate this page or delete this page as i say if i delete volume correction i'll say delete that page so that page won't be there so you can see that page is not there so i we can uh, modify it based on the requirement so here are the some of the things uh, even grading is a option we have 
and uh, it's not only that uh, we have till lt so it can also integrate with moodle back, uh, blackboard even canvas so again this can be integrated uh, with that and there also you can manage the lesson as well as student data so these were some few of the details so in case if you are interested you can surely contact us for the uh, brief demo since we have this uh, short webinar so i won't be able to cover everything so i have given you the highlights on uh, what lt is about and and coming to uh, so we are uh, coming with uh, uh, you know reliable portable sensors that can be used with uh, uh, lt so let me share my screen So these are uh, the upcoming LT sensors we have. As uh, this can be, as I said, uh, this can be, uh, the LT can be used with power lab. So we also have come up with few of the uh, sensors that can directly connect to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, device, to any of the device you're using. It can be laptop or uh, desktop. You can directly connect it and record the uh, data live. So these sensors, as you can see, connects directly via USB connection, as you can see the connections here. So this is a finger pulse, and here is the uh, USB port that uh, USB device that is connected here, and it will give you the live data of finger pulse. So there are a few of the sensors of uh, we have here, uh, and it's also low cost and again you don't have uh, as as we are not able to go to the labs and these are what power lab and other are very heavy equipments you cannot carry it so usb based are something that are portable and you can carry it anywhere whether you are at uh, home or you are in the lab so uh, i hope it was a useful uh, session uh, thank you that's all from my side yeah, we can head to questions now. Yeah, so there are a few of the questions. Uh, yeah, uh, here is a question like how many students we can invite or add? So we can uh, invite the student based on number of people you subscribe for. If it is for 50 students, you can invite only 50 students. So, so just to uh, add on, uh, yeah. what question we told, I think. So it is LT is based on subscription, but depending upon for how many years are you are taking and for how many students you are taking and what content you are taking. So we have kept it uh, configurable so that you can get the minimum prices and you have not to pay the whole prices. So depending upon your requirement, it can be, the price can be customized. And that's make a difference so that for the minimum price, you can get the best benefits. Next, I think we can take some of the questions, Vaishnavi. Uh. Yeah, the data that we have stored in LT, uh, so there is a question, the data used uh, is obtained from the sample data in a respiratory. So these data are something that we have uploaded. So these were taken from uh, uh, the software called LabChart and they were uploaded here. So uh, that's how we have this example data and this example data are uh, like uh, you already have it and you can uh, use it, use those. There won't be any issue in uh, using those example data. Okay, there is one more question in the chat. If uh, like if I want to create a custom lesson, how can I create the download button and commit button? Okay, so for you, this you can, yeah. yes, Vaishnavi, go ahead, you can. Yes. Yeah, so as I have uh, shown you in the pages, let me share my screen again. Yeah, 
so as uh, i'll just go to one of the lessons so this is under edit when you are doing the customized one if i go under edit you no need to create uh, uh, the uh, submit or commit button so under pages it's taking time to load so if i click on this there is a checkpoint page so that page uh, if yeah pages so here you can see there is a checkpoint page so if i say create new checkpoint page so this page will come up so once you feel okay i have completed this if if it is for a test or something then you can uh, complete the questions and uh, at the end end of the lesson or a page uh, you can include this page checkpoint page so once they click on this they won't be able to change any of their answers they can just uh, preview their uh, a lesson or the data whatever they have added uh, or typed in the answer uh, after commit they won't be able to change anything i hope this clears the doubt vishnu we there is one more question uh, we yeah. have coming like how do you send standardized the each module any experts were available for each subject so i think that's a very good question asa would you like to answer this one you mean uh, the contents that we are providing right okay yeah the content yes yeah. yes so that has been uh, like uh, done in collaborative with few of the doctors and few of the few of our uh, clients who have been using the lt from a long time and they have done it like uh, uh, like for 5 years or 6 years they have been using it and they have collaborated with us to create this content so one more question coming up so recording live data requires lt sensors right that's true yes no other yes. way to record it virtually right yeah so I'll so that's why we have fed the example data since now it's not possible to you know record the live data so that's why we have the example data once you have the hardware you can surely record the live okay thank you so if anyone has other questions uh, let us know okay one more question coming up do we add formula in table to calculate by student online for example if we need to take out percentage so in lt we have this uh, uh, no percentage also it's uh, automatic calculated by lt so it depends on what uh, what they have answered and how much points they have got towards the end at the last uh, there is a percentage column which will give individual student percentage so it's all in build uh, you need not uh, have to add any formulas based on what they have answered and how many correct answers they have it will automatically calculate those values okay i hope uh... Mavish Fatima got the answer for what you are looking for. We have one more question from Amir. LT sensors are connected to any laptop and just open the LT platform for recording. Yes, yes. You you can Correct. log in. Yeah, as this is a cloud based LT platform, so LT is a cloud based. So you can log in from a, any of the devices you have. Even mobile also work. But to record the live, you need to have either desktop or laptop. So yes, you can log in from anywhere, and just connect the LT sensors and you can do the recording. Any other questions or any other doubts anyone is having can write us now or maybe later. Over to you, Sandeep. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Sorry, I missed that question. Is standardized one. uh just to answer that uh, what vesnavi says what correct actually uh, we have a team of more than 30 scientists working uh, in developing these modules in our r&d and we we take uh, uh, those lessons uh, th those theories and calculations from world renowned and most published uh, you know uh, books around the world so those are those are standardized if you are particularly concern about any of the modules uh, references which th those can be shared that this is 
been consulted with that particular professors yeah if there are no more questions uh, then i like to sincerely thanks michelle yap for giving us this her valuable time and sharing that wonderful knowledge on uh, the challenges that we are facing uh, in uh, this time about on uh, student engagement uh, teacher and students physical classes uh, meeting in the lab in the labs and going to university so this was like one of the challenge for us also and you know lt existed from even before that covid and it has been very successful but we try to uh, we started giving uh 90 days trial free to every uh, professors and uh, the staff around the world and it has been a great response uh, they have really been a, a great success that many of our uh, prominent universities are now using lt on trial even they are actually going for their own lt now so yeah we have been able to solve uh, this issue up to certain extent and as vesnavi mentioned in her talk uh, somewhere that it was never it is not only about this uh, pandemic and you know the 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 challenges we are facing lt has been exist uh, has been with us uh, before that many years and it will continue uh, be helping even if like uh, you know the when we have physical students and even if we are teaching from uh, uh, online uh, or distance learning and recently we are very exciting uh, uh, excited about uh, launching our, our lt sensors which will be really helpful that those those are very low cost and entry level sensors where they can be carried by any any anyone in the pockets and and just connect to their pc or laptop or tab and they can continue, they, they will perform the experiment and to and submit it to uh, to review to their uh, professors so i hope it has been a great session uh, or learning session to all of our attendees we sincerely thanks again and thank you very much vesnavi and uh, michel uh, we are, we highly appreciate your time and your knowledge on this so thank you so very much thank you to us yeah uh, we will share the certificates with everyone and uh, uh, any questions uh, please feel free to uh, keep posting us reach out yeah yeah thanks everyone thanks for joining us today thanks michelle for imparting your valuable knowledge with us i hope that will help every one of us in making our science and education easier thank you so much thanks everyone we hope to connect with you soon in the next webinar bye bye for now